Yesterday, a critical intelligence base of the Israeli occupation forces was reduced to rubble after Lebanese resistance forces launched a fierce missile strike. The timing of the attack seems deliberate, coming just after Israel's airstrike in Beirut that killed several top commandos of the resistance during a high-level meeting. This retaliatory strike by the Lebanese resistance targeted multiple espionage and surveillance centers of the occupation regime, with reports confirming that direct hits were achieved, causing significant damage to the infrastructure of these intelligence hubs. Despite efforts to suppress our voices, we remain committed to delivering truthful, fact-based news and analysis from Lebanon and Gaza. Your support is crucial in ensuring independent journalism thrives. Please like and share this content with those around you and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. According to statements released by the resistance, they struck the espionage centre in Mishar with Katyusha missiles and also targeted an air observation and operation headquarters at the Meron base, launching dozens of missiles in what appears to be a highly coordinated attack. These two intelligence bases play a crucial role in Israel's monitoring and military operations against both Lebanese and Palestinian resistance movements, so hitting them was a bold and calculated move. The damage inflicted could hinder Israel's ability to gather real-time intelligence, especially as tensions flare on multiple fronts. In their official statement, the Lebanese resistance emphasized that this attack was conducted in solidarity with the steadfast Palestinian people in Gaza whose resistance continues against Israeli aggression. The statement also pointed out that the strike was a direct response to Israel's continuous provocations and attacks on villages in southern Lebanon, where Israeli forces have frequently harassed and bombarded civilian areas. Despite the intensity of this missile barrage, the Lebanese resistance clarified that their actions were not meant to escalate the conflict, but to deter further Israeli aggression and harassment of innocent Lebanese citizens. As the situation unfolds, the resistance has released additional statements, confirming more missile attacks on key military sites in Israel. This is as Israel has announced the closure of the airspace from Hadera region in Haifa to the border with Lebanon. The resistance said they had targeted a vital defence and missile base connected to Israel's northern region command at the Biria barracks, again using Katyusha missiles. Another significant strike was carried out on a military headquarters of the Israeli occupation's 36th Division. These strikes appear to be part of a broader strategy by the Lebanese resistance to disrupt Israel's military operations along the northern front, further complicating Israel's ability to prepare for large-scale conflict in southern Lebanon. Discussing the recent developments in the Lebanese conflict, Russia didn't hold back in its criticism of Israel and its Western allies particularly over their disregard for the escalating situation in the region. Russia's permanent representative to the United Nations, Vasily Nebenzia, made a pointed statement, calling out Israel's actions as not just reckless, but dangerously insensitive to the realities on the ground. According to Nebenzia, the world can no longer turn a blind eye to the crimes of the regime occupying Palestine, highlighting that Israel's recent tactics, such as the remote detonation of pages and walkie-talkies across Lebanon, have crossed a serious line. Nebenzia didn't mince words when he labelled these actions as outright war crimes. He stressed that these are not just violations of international law, but deliberate and dangerous acts of aggression targeting civilians. The explosion of these devices, which are everyday tools for communication, has sown fear and chaos among Lebanese citizens, further inflaming an already volatile situation. For Neben Zaya, the real issue is the impact these moves are having on ordinary people, who are increasingly becoming collateral damage in a conflict that seems to have no end in sight. World, the entire world was flooded with images showing the horrific magnitude of the devastation from the Israeli airstrike. We strongly condemn such actions by West Jerusalem. We call on all parties to exercise maximum restraint, to immediately cease fire, and to comply with the resolution, the, the, the provisions of Resolution 1701. A major war in the Middle East is in nobody interest. Also noteworthy is that spiraling violence is clearly undermining the Biden administration's widely touted efforts, both for ceasefire in uh, the Gaza Strip 
and for stabilization of the situation on the blue line in Lebanon, the results of this pseudo diplomacy are dubious at best. Instead of peace, there's an ongoing, we see ongoing bloodletting in the occupied Palestinian territory, the murder of the head of the uh, political uh, bureau of Hamas, Mr. Hanin, who was the main negotiator on the deal with Israel. And now the first ever large scale terrorist attack with the use of information communications technologies, which resulted in fatalities. In the light of the policy declared by Washington and allies to use ICT for the attainment of offensive military political objectives, it is clear that specifically their actions have brought us to this threshold where we are liable to encounter ter where we where we are liable to encounter terrorist threat with the use of domestic appliances. Given that according to incoming reports, we're talking about remote manipulation of electronic devices, by the way, from a different jurisdiction, uh, we view this as an exceedingly dangerous precedent. We repeatedly cautioned against such risks, including at specialized United Nations platforms, where the issue of international information security is discussed. Having foreseen that ICT can be used for destructive purposes, Russia has already for a number of years advanced the idea of establishment of a specific international legal regime to resolve the, to, address, to govern the digital landscape. And this would take into account technical vulnerabilities, including anonymity, cross-border features, and other hidden functions. Unfortunately, the United States and allies consistently uh, object to any such obligations in this sphere in order to maintain their freedom of movement. The consequences of this are apparent in the terrorist attack in Lebanon. If we were talking about the consequences for the information telecommunications landscape, these kinds of incidents further worsen the already growing mistrust by states of information communications devices manufactured in other countries. This, in turn, furthers the trend of self-isolation of national infrastructures in this area, and as a consequence results in the fragmentation of, of the information space, undermining international standards in this area, the destruction of supply chains, and the expansion of the digital divide between developed and developing countries. With respect to the terrorist attack in Lebanon, the question of the origin of the electronic devices used for the explosions is fundamental. There is a need for a detailed account of the commercial structures involved regarding the safety of their products. Let us recall that states pursuant to specialized key resolutions of the General Assembly, states have the obligation to ensure supply chain integrity. Mr. President, Regardless of uh, how ever, however horrific this instance of the use of ICT for terrorist purposes may be, the international community is not powerless in the face of this threat. Recently, at Russia's initiative, a global intergovernmental directory of points of contact was launched to prevent and resolve serious incidents in the information landscape, as well as to reduce tensions in crisis situations. This instrument was specifically designed in order to prevent, the, to prevent escalation in the digital landscape, which is liable to then spill over into the real world. We call upon all stakeholders, first and foremost, Lebanon, to avail itself of this directory. We expect that the recipients, recipients of a possible request from Beirut will immediately study it and will provide a response to Lebanese colleagues. This is key to determine all of the circumstances behind what happened in Lebanon. Mr. President, it is clear to all that the key to resolving the current and to the key to uh, to, to reverse in the current unprecedented escalation in the Middle East lies in ending the bloodletting in the Gaza Strip, where the number of, of dead has now exceeded 42,000 people. The only resolution is a prompt establishment of a ceasefire exchange of hostages and, prince and prisoners and the organization of unimpeded humanitarian access to the Strip. This is the only way to relaunch the process of peaceful resolution to the Palestinian question on the international legal basis, at the heart of which lies the principle of two states for two peoples, which we steadfastly support. Meanwhile, part, we 
it is pertinent to note that the recent attacks by the Lebanese resistance on Israel's intelligence and military infrastructure could have far-reaching consequences. Mishar and Meron bases, in particular, are key to Israel's ability to gather intelligence and monitor resistance movements across Lebanon and Gaza. By crippling these espionage centers, the resistance has not only sent a strong message to Israel, but also made it clear that they are capable of targeting high-value sites with precision and efficiency. What's particularly notable is the tone of the Lebanese resistance's statements. Despite the scale of the attacks, they maintain that their actions are solely defensive and meant to push back against Israeli provocations. Their message is clear. Further Israeli aggression will not go unanswered, but they have no intention of escalating the conflict unnecessarily. This restraint may be part of a calculated effort to keep the focus on Gaza, where the situation remains dire as Palestinian resistance forces face continued bombardment. By standing in solidarity with the Palestinian people and focusing their retaliatory strikes on military and intelligence targets, the Lebanese resistance is positioning itself as both a defender of Lebanon and a key ally of the Palestinians in their struggle against Israeli occupation. The Israeli military, on the other hand, is likely to view these strikes as a serious escalation. The damage to their intelligence capabilities in the north could delay or complicate their plans for further military operations in Lebanon. Mishar and Meron were integral to Israel's surveillance of Lebanese resistance movements, and without them, Israeli forces may struggle to accurately monitor movements or coordinate attacks. The strikes could force Israel to reassess its military strategy in the region, possibly shifting resources to protect other critical infrastructure from future attacks. For now, the situation remains tense and both sides are likely weighing their next moves carefully. While the Lebanese resistance has signalled that it does not seek a full-scale war, the precision and scale of their attacks show that they are more than capable of defending their territory and supporting their allies in Gaza. Israel, meanwhile, will likely be reeling from the blow to its intelligence network, knowing that the Lebanese resistance has proven itself a formidable and unpredictable opponent. The question is, how does an attack on these bases affect the general intelligence posture of the occupation army? To be frank, the latest strike of Katusha rockets by Lebanese resistance forces targeting Israel's espionage centers in Mishar and Meron could have a serious impact on Israel's war plans in Lebanon. These espionage centers are critical to Israel's intelligence operations, especially in terms of monitoring Lebanese resistance activities, tracking communications, and guiding military responses. So, Hitting these targets is a big deal. It's like cutting off a key source of information that Israel depends on to make strategic decisions on the battlefield. Without the real-time intelligence these centers provide, Israel's ability to plan and execute military operations in Lebanon would be significantly compromised. These sites help guide airstrikes, locate resistance fighters, and coordinate troop movements so losing them could leave Israeli forces operating with much less accuracy and insight. This means Israel could face delays or even missteps in their operations as they scramble to recover from the loss of their intelligence advantage. On top of that, the attack could create a sense of vulnerability within the Israeli military. If the Lebanese resistance can accurately target and strike such high-value sites with Katyusha rockets, it signals that they have the capability to hit key Israeli infrastructure which could lead to a more defensive or cautious posture from the Israeli command. They might have to shift resources to protect other critical intelligence and military assets, diverting attention away from their offensive plans in southern Lebanon. This type of attack could also send a shockwave through Israeli public opinion. There's already a high level of tension with the ongoing conflict, and news of successful strikes on key Israeli installations could lead to questions about the government's ability to secure the country and control the situation. As a result, Israeli leaders might feel pressured to rethink their war strategy, not just militarily, but politically, as the public looks for reassurance in the face of these vulnerabilities.